Hello, hello everyone. So I have my first junk journal process video for you today and I'm just showing you my junk journal and I'm going to talk to you a little bit and go off on a little bit of a tangent about what a junk journal is and, and all of those fun things. So this size should seem a bit familiar because I use a traveler's notebook sized junk journal. Uh, that's the size I'm comfortable in, but there are tons of ways to make them. <coughs> there are bound ones. Some people make them with old um, golden picture books, which I really want to get my hands on one of those. Um, I do not make my own junk journals. I have my junk journals made, and um, I consume them, <laughs> fill them, but I don't make them. Uh, for my junk journals, I get them from... Uh, Rock Your Notebook, which I know will be a huge, enormous surprise to you all, right? Uh, and they're stitched, and I can make them super chunky and fabulous. If you want to see another style of junk journaling, like the inside part, I would check out Johanna Clow on YouTube. She does those nice, big, chunky, like, bound ones, but I really like my TN size. So the papers in this particular junk journal, there's doilies, there's onion skin paper, there's um, Daphne's diary papers in it. Uh, so lots of different fun things. First thing I did was I chose my photo and off camera I did a little bit of hand lettering onto a card. Um, I'm just practicing really. And so now I'm going to use one of these onion skin papers and I'm going to put some watercolor on them. Just These are Tombow or uh, Kiritake watercolors, my favorites, and I'm going to use some yellow and I'm going to use some golds and some green. I love how this onion skin paper like warps up so it doesn't bleed through, doesn't make a lot of stuff wet, and I'm not using a ton of water here anyway, but it definitely, definitely uh, like it gets this like funky texture to it that I absolutely love. So the first thing I did was pick a page. Um, don't work in junk journals if you're going to work inside of them. Uh, my advice would be never work in order, just play. So I started with a photo, as always, because I am a memory keeper. And what I do for these is I pick a photo that I'm never going to scrapbook. <laughs> pretty photos, you know, whatever. For this particular photo, which was just of some pretty flowers, I am going to um, use that photo. And then I did practice some hand lettering, and I'm going to um, go ahead and use the picture with a quote. So, as you can see here, I'm creating some a vine of some sort. <laughs> Free flow watercolor painting. That's what we have here. I am leaving this entire process in. If you'd like me to kind of shorten them up a little bit, just leave a comment and let me know. But I thought it would be super fun to these don't take long, so this whole entire junk journal spread took me like about 35 minutes, and that was with getting distracted and having to walk away, and I cut those parts out of the video, but, so really not that bad. So you can see how easy this is. I am just freehanding a vine, freehanding some leaves. They can look messy, they can look kinda off, or wonky, or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just for fun, and that's the beauty of a junk journal. We don't have to worry about archival safe. We don't have to worry about um, anything. This is just fun, fun play. Um, when I do a junk journal, I want texture. I want kind of a busy look. I want a shabby chic look. I want it to be my style, what I would do on all of my scrapbook pages if I didn't feel like I needed to have, um, if I didn't feel like I needed to represent a photo, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> total just fun. Um, and you're going to see that as I work along with this uh, page today. Now I'm going to add some gold uh, watercolor to the yellow just a little bit. It's going to look pretty dark when I do it here at first and it might not even look good to your eye but once it dries it'll dry back lighter and it will blend in with the yellow a little bit more and it just gives this really nice shimmer and shine when it's all finished. <clears throat> so now I'm thinking about what I want to do with this vine, and I decided I want to add these embroidered flowers 
from the Bygones Variety Shop. And I'm going to set that off to the side so that it can dry thoroughly. Um, I don't do heat guns unless I'm heat embossing. <laughs> I just think things look better when they're allowed to kind of just do their thing. So I found a flower quote that I liked just on Pinterest or somewhere and um, I'm going to cover this tag with some old paper distress oxide ink and it is going to smudge my lettering just a bit but I don't mind because the point of this isn't the lettering so much as the um, kind of aesthetic. So that's also a really fun thing about junk journaling. It has nothing to do with you know really good memory keeping. Uh, it gets, to some extent it can, but it really can be whatever you want. But for me, it's just about playing with art supplies. So the other side of this page, I'm going to go ahead and create it using the tag and this photo. I'm going to go through some of my products that were in my white and gold design team kit for January. I'm going to decide that I really want to pull in some of these gold doilies and I actually end up using both of the gold doilies that were in the kit. Um, I know that I want to add one of these super fun brass like quilt pins and I know that I want to back my photo with some of this sewing paper. So this is a sewing pattern which means lots and lots of paper. I'm actually going to use this on another project later on and what I'm doing is I'm taking my tiny attacher, so simple. <laughs> Three, ta three, um, three little staples, and then I'm going to attach my photo, and then I'm going to like tear the square. So you've got this like big, gorgeous, like layered, embellished um, paper behind the tag, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the doily on here. So the doily is going to hang over a little bit, which I'm totally fine with. I'm just going to go ahead and flip the flip it over and put it and trim that bit off and then I'm actually going to use that bit too. So <clears throat> I'm going to place the tag over here and I love how the green that's part of this junk journal kind of really sets off my photo here and that's why I chose this particular page in my journal to work on today. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of trim this up nice and sturdy and then I'm going to use that bit of um, extra paper on another part of the journal. I'm going to tuck it in behind the, the tag right here. So now I know that I want to use this really big like quilt pin. It's so cute. I love them. There's two of those in those little bags and I think they're going to be like the first thing I use. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some of this gorgeous trim. This is um, it almost reminds me of sari trim or seam binding trim. I'm going to use it to tie my tag and then we're going to pull some of it into the other side of my light, of my spread too. And um, I love when stuff sticks out of my junk journals. I love when they're like not just chunky because you can see I'm putting that gigantic pin in. Um, not just when they're chunky, but also like when stuff sticks out of them. I think it's really cool. Little tabs and different things like that. So um, probably I'll do another um, junk journal spread at some point and add some tabs in there so you can see what those look like too. And now I'm going to take this other part of the trim um, and I'm going to go ahead and snip it. And I'm going to use it as a little bit of a border down the other side of the page and this all of these trims are incredibly textural and very very um, like fun to touch which I think is amazing that's part of the reason that's part of the reason just you want the texture you want the textile you know flipping through and being able to feel all the different things that are there so I am going to go ahead and add just that lovely little border and um, of both of the fabrics, the ribbons here. The nice thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I added um, some more kind of grubbiness or shabbiness to this tag. So I went ahead and I hit it with some water to kind of 
blot away some of that Distress Oxide ink, which reacts to water and is really awesome. And then I'm going to take this really big kind of watercolor pen that I, paintbrush that I have, and I'm going to splatter more of that gold. Um, and I'm going to do that everywhere over both sides of the page, just a little bit to wipe off off my photo. I'm going to blot away just a little of it, so you still get that gorgeous gold, but um, it'll dry a little bit quicker this way. I junk journal with paper towels and baby wipes right at hand, <laughs> ready to go right beside me because I do tend to make these a messier kind of thing. So my glue has dried on my onion skin. By the way, this is just a Scotch quick dry adhesive um, in a fine line bottle. It's not called quick dry adhesive anymore. I think it's called tacky glue. That's what you want to look for. A lot of crafters use it. It's pretty easy to come by. And you can just get the fine line bottles with the yellow tips. At a local store. Easy peasy. My leaves are dried now and I want to add some detailing to them. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking a Sharpie paint pen. This is a white oil-based fine, extra fine point paint pen by Sharpie. I literally got these at Walmart. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting some highlights over my watercolor with this uh, paint pen. And it doesn't look necessarily, it might be a little bit hard to see on camera, so I did go ahead and add a close-up of just this part to the end of the video so you can really see how that kind of sets everything off. Um, I love how it makes it look sketchy um, because I am not the best watercolor in the world. I'm not a fabulous artist, but adding these little white paint pen details over top of the watercolor just gives it that extra little sketchy look that I really do enjoy. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to glue down these embroidered flowers and I use every one that was in my pack. <laughs> and I'm going to put them all the way down the side of and around my vine. <clears throat> so now I have this piece of the sewing pattern that's just like, I think it was an off cut from when I did that the bit from behind my photo. And what I'm gonna do is I want some more texture. So basically what I wanna do here is I wanna make sure that if I have an element on the right side of my spread, I have a similar type of element on the left side. So I use the sewing patterns around my photo. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit of a ruffle on the inside seam so that um, this uh, left side now looks almost like stripes, which was my plan. So we have the watercolor, we have the trims, we've got the vine. So what I've kind of done is I've created a pattern that has uh, vertical lines going down all different kinds and textures and patterns and different things. Decided I need just a little bit more gold to set this photo off. I'm just going to tuck that right underneath there. Um, and I the nice thing about that tacky glue is that it dries hard, but it dries, uh, you have some time to apply. Now I'm just going to kind of trim everything up, and I think that that's the end of this process. I think this is all, that was my last little bit, was that little bit of ruffling on the left side. I'm just going to trim up. Now you'll notice I'm not trimming everything. I love those little bits that are sticking out at the top. I love little bits that are little string things that are sticking out on the side. But I also know that I want everything to stay put. Another thing you will always see on my junk journal pages is that I put a date. And now we're going to add sequins. That's right. I threw sequins all over this page and then glued them down. As you can see here, literally just throw them on the page and glue them down. I love that little bit of sparkle. Um, whenever I use sequins on a project, they will always come from Spiegel Mom Scraps because um, those are my favorite mixes and I adore them. So... I'm also on her design team, and I have a <clears throat> discount code you can use if you're interested in those as well.
So I'm just going to glue everything down, and this is a bit tedious, so I'm going to kind of um, fast forward through most of this for you because you can see how I'm gluing the sequins down. And that's my spread. I'd love to hear any comments you might have about this video and my junk journaling. This is a part of my life that I don't put on social media, so starting to do videos with this is a brand new adventure for me. And I hope that you will enjoy it and enjoy this part of my creative process that is just pure art. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye!